Hi, Far North here. I have two knives to review for you today. They are made by Shadow Tech Knives. And uh, I have the Talon E as an Echo Bowie knife. And the Backup, also a Bowie knife. Now these knives are both available in uh, different shapes, models. They do tantos, serrated edges, etc. Uh, this knife company is pretty new to me. These are the only knives of theirs I own. They make a lot of uh, a lot of different types, daggers. Uh, I think they're starting with some push daggers now. They have a lot of bigger blades as well. Uh, I certainly encourage you to take a look. Uh, I'm going to talk about this knife first, the Talon, Talon E. Uh, overall length, 7 inches. Blade length, 3.5. Thickness, 3 16 Width is 1 inch. 1095 high carbon steel, they say it's RC5758 powder coat finish. Uh, all these numbers are off the website. The backup is uh, 6 inches overall length, 2.5 inch blade, 3 16 thickness. This one's 1 and a quarter wide, also 1095 RC5758 powder coat. Uh, just let me have a look at the blade side by side a little. They both come with a Kydex sheath, custom, and this one, and they both actually retailed for uh, 65 US. I don't recall what I paid for shipping, but I'm assuming that means it was pretty reasonable. Um, both knives come with this uh, belt clip that can be uh, attached in multiple positions. The Kydex sheaths have several mounting holes on each one, so you could carry this uh, vertical angled horizontal. Um, you could try a neck carry of some kind, I suppose, but these are actually fairly heavy knife. I don't actually have the weights. I don't have a scale that could uh, weigh something this light, but uh, for their size, they're relatively heavy. It is uh, a pretty thick blade, though, and they're obviously full tang. And they both have uh, G10 handles. So first off, I'll start uh, with what I like about the knives, which is quite a bit. Um, especially for the talon here. Uh, basically to me, uh, I was looking for a small size knife I could carry on my belt, comfortable, I wasn't going to dig in my hip, um, and that had uh, a secure handle. I said I, I really want to try and keep the bulk, bulk down. I didn't want anything too heavy, but um, bulk was a big deal. I don't like things uh, poking me in the hip and that if it's something I'm going to be carrying all the time. Uh, I had a street beat before, a parent street beat. I'm a big fan of uh, the parent knives. Uh, that was a pretty good knife. Uh, the issue I had with it, well, besides the fact that it's quite expensive, um, which it, it is a good knife, but something about the handle didn't quite fit my hand perfectly. And uh, the sheath that came with it, actually, I was not impressed with. Um, so then, uh, I think online is where I came across these. Somebody had suggested it's sort of as a cheaper alternative, like uh, Street Beats, like $150 to $200. Uh, and I came across these knives, and uh, it's pretty great. Uh, categories for this, um, obviously a uh, utility, sort of an EDC knife, I would say, for me anyways. Uh, it could be a self-defense knife. I think that's actually what they market them as. And uh, you could perhaps use it as a small bushcraft knife, Though I have not done any tests of that whatsoever, and I don't know if anybody else has either. Um, it is a carbon steel knife. Sharpness is uh, reasonably good. I'm sure you could uh, do something with that. But yeah, it's the handle that I think is the biggest plus for it. I love this handle design. Uh, instead of having uh, some sort of hilt that's bulky and awkward, instead uh, this nice finger groove here uh, absolutely keeps your hand locked in. Uh, you cannot slide your fingers up. There's no guard in the back to get in the way of my thumb for any uh, for pushing on it or for that Filipino grip. Uh, and for my relatively smallish hands, I can actually get enough of my pinky on there to get a proper grip. Uh, so, quite liking that. The Kydex sheath, excellent. Snaps in great. Totally secure. No rattle. Uh, very comfortable. No issues there. Uh, pulls out either with a relatively hard tug, uh, not a problem if it's on your belt, and, or it doesn't have a thumb ramp, but there's enough here that you can push a little bit with your thumb to get it out. 
uh, about the only negative I guess you could come up with uh, for my mind uh, is that the handle scales are not flush with the hilt some people find that a really big deal um, you can see a little bit of the black hilt sticking out there I'm running my fingernail along it it's flush in the back I find it comfortable though I don't have any issues I'll, I'll try out a couple knives just for comparison here for size and that uh, Fall Niven F1 another thick blade um, I could be totally wrong this would be completely suggest subjective uh, this feels maybe a tiny bit heavier um, this is also a full tang knife obviously totally different steel and massively different price uh, this knife is probably I think it was around a hundred dollars for one of these I have to look that up and the sheath it comes with this is not the sheath it comes with uh, I had uh, custom kydex made for it uh, it's a nice sheath and everything but there's probably another thirty dollars for that so about hundred thirty dollars maybe more for this set whereas uh, this is half the price probably not going to be the same kind of bushcrafting knife but still useful for that most likely and uh, like I said, good for a lot of other tasks good price, very comfortable uh, and the overall length is quite a bit smaller and I actually find the handle is far more secure because of this groove uh, this is has just a small finger groove here I'd like to have seen a little more uh, it's more the craton or whatever this material is, the grippiness of it that provides security. Plus, this is uh, not designed to be thrusting with, or really, or anything like that. This is a survival bushcrafting type knife. And just for another uh, bushcrafting knife comparison, more of 511, again, just for size. Yeah, that's about the only similarity between these. Um, what is that? They're carbon steel. Um, this is much thinner, has a much bigger handle, much smaller blade. Uh, this is basically a weightless knife, um, and that's because it has a rat tail tang that goes to maybe about here. Plastic handle. Uh, I love this knife, but I mean it's a totally different category of knife. This is designed to be very functional, useful, and cheap. This is just like a ten dollar knife. Um, so again, great knife. The backup is also, I would say, a great knife. It's just not a great knife for me. Um, mostly because, uh, well, a couple things here. I don't really like the super wide blade. Um, and I'm not crazy about a super short handle. But they do provide this nice finger groove here. Hopefully you can see that. Sort of a double groove, or maybe a sub hilt, you might call it. Um, which locks your hand in incredibly well. Again, your hand's not sliding up, and now it's also not sliding down either. So even though this is a super short handle, you've got nice grip there. But it's only a three finger grip. I got this sort of as a whim to try it out. Like I said, it's just not my type of blade, but I think a lot of people would like it. I mean, again, a nice solid piece of steel if you were looking for maybe a really short self-defense knife. Uh, this could be the knife for you. Uh, as well as, uh, especially because the blade length is only two and a half inches. So I know some jurisdictions can have different blade length issues. Uh, so this that might be extra useful for you there. Uh, I would take this over this knife for me any day. Um, just the overall shape and comfort, but a lot of people, like I said, would probably end up liking this knife a little better because of its incredibly small compactness. I mean, hence the knife backup. Um, that's what this is intended to be. It is a backup knife. Also, uh, fits in there very well. Uh, it's a great sheath. Uh, very impressed, and it's also $65. Just to sort of do a comparison, I know I've been talking about the sheath a bunch, and people may, might be wondering why. Um, I've ended up with a lot of great knives that I really like that had just atrocious sheaths or non-functional sheaths. Um, the F1 has a, you know, it's a good sheath, but I just didn't like it. I wanted a Kydex sheath. So then you have to find someone, maybe get one custom made, or, or if you have a really odd knife, um, you're definitely going to have to get it custom. There's probably nobody that has any in stock. Um, it can be a lot of trouble. Uh, and just to show that even knives that come with a Kydex sheath are not necessarily worth the money, this is uh, one of my absolute all-time favorite knives. I think this is just a fantastic knife, deserving of its own video, which I will do at a certain point. 